Welcome to the Friday edition of Wine's World and I was thinking when I was finishing up my Tuesday video that I might do a little bit more cooking today but I'm not going to uh, because uh, I've had a flood of stuff uh, to do with my publications and so forth so uh, just didn't have time. I did make a wonderful steak and kidney pudding which I'm just about finishing now and I've still got my master stock on this, the hob uh, still boiling it away every day and so all of that's good and today I had an idea that I would talk about nicknames and in particular nicknames in Argentina um, very uh, strange system of naming there which uh, people in the United States and the United Kingdom uh, are not used to and I'm tying it together with unpacking Easter I'll show you a little video here of the Murgas in Buenos Aires carnival dancers now, Buenos Aires loves carnival and there's plenty to do on weekends especially in the evenings Friday Saturday and Sunday all the way up to Shrove Tuesday when they have an enormous blowout of all the Morgus troops in one barrio and big 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 party so let's get started on nicknames <laughs> Now in order to understand nicknames in Argentina you have to know one important fact first which is that we do not use diminutives. Every name in Argentina has a diminutive and if you know uh, Eva Perón at all you'll know from the, um, from the musical Evita that a vita is the diminutive of Eva and that was deliberate Th that was a political ploy on her part to allow people to publicly use her diminutive but that's also very very unusual I have a diminutive all um, names have some way of ending in ito or ita which is the way that you diminish anything like you can say poco which is uh, small or poquito which is a little bit small uh, and th that's just uh, the normal way that you diminish anything so if you want to diminish a word uh, you add ito or ita if you want to diminish a name you add some form of ito or ita it depends on how the name is constructed so my name Juan is turned into a diminutive by adding sito so my diminutive is Juancito um, Carla is Carlito or Carlita I should say sorry um, and so on and you are just absolutely not allowed to use them uh, either in public or in private under, under normal circumstances there are a few cases where you can use a diminutive one of them is within very close families uh, your mother for example can call you by a diminutive and your spouse can or brothers and sisters but even that's not entirely common but it but it's possible 
But I got into huge problems when I was dating a, a woman in uh, Buenos Aires whose name was Carla. And I referred to her as Carlita in public. And I thought she was going to kill me. Oh, like the, the sky fell. It was awful. It's just not done. It, it's not... It's in, it's a way of diminishing a person in everybody's eyes and so it just it just can't be used so the the anglo world habit of david is dave or michael is mike and uh, so forth just doesn't happen but they do have ways of being friendly <laughs> and, and that's by using nicknames uh, which is really wonderful and they use them sometimes as a permanent thing uh, much like in the English speaking world uh, that also an interesting thing in, in my uh, schooling in England uh, when I first went uh, to a, a grammar school um, from Australia my <laughs> My friends um, took my last name, which is Forrest, and turned it into Woody. And so for all of my school years, I was Woody. <laughs> and I remember in Australia, uh, I had uh, a, a friend in my class who was called Mozzie, and Mozzie is the, uh, <laughs> is the Australian diminutive of mosquito. And he was called Mozzie because when he was a small boy, he had a leather jacket with a, a decal of a mosquito on the back and so on. When I, when I was in grammar school, there were a ton of my friends who had nicknames, not least because a lot of them had the same first name, even though we didn't use them. That was the real oddity about English grammar schools was that we always used each other's surnames and uh, so that the fact that there were seven boys called David in my class didn't really matter but one was called Beanie, one was called Conky, I, I, uh, one was called Cow <laughs> and that was an interesting one because his last name was Way, he was David Way and so first of all he was called Milky, you know like Milky Way and then Milky got changed to cow, <laughs> and that was the one that stuck, of all things. But um, something strange happened between the fifth form and the sixth form. In the fifth form, uh, you take your first public exams, and approximately two-thirds of the students in the school leave after the first public exam and get jobs and the rest go on into the sixth form, which is much smaller and it's an elite group. Usually wear a different school uniform, uh, have all kinds of privileges that the lower school doesn't have and so forth. And it really surprised me that when I got into the sixth form and I attended my first uh, form uh, meeting before, before classes began in my new sixth form uniform, and all the students had dropped nicknames like that was babyish so like now instead of nicknames they were using the proper first name very strange anyway in a, in in argentina uh some nicknames are like english nicknames like they stick so that you're always going to be addressed by that nickname and you'll introduce yourself usually by that or you may introduce yourself um, like I might say um, uh, I am Juan Alejandro but you can call me Gitano. Gitano means gypsy and that was a very common nickname for me. Um, some, some nicknames are kind of generic. Um, the, the two that are very very common are flaco which means skinny and gordo 
which means fat, or, or gordito, which means chubby, you know, or gordita, uh, all, all very, very common and, and, and used all the time. Uh, I remember one time I was on vacation with Carla and we were at a lakeside beach and there were men goofing around near us and swimming and one of them accidentally went swimming with his watch on and somehow or other managed to lose it and had to go back in and they were all diving up and down trying to find the watch, never did. And, but at some point Carlo yelled out to the man who'd lost his watch, hey Gordo, blah 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 blah, you know, like, and it was just normal, it's just expected. There's also a kind of uh, ironic use of, of the same nicknames, so that, for example, you might refer to a really fat man as Flaco, or a really skinny man as Gordo. Uh, it just depends on, on the circumstances. They also, rather surprisingly to me, quite commonly use the nickname Negro, you know, which you know, means black. Um, but but in, uh, in, in Argentine Spanish, it, it just means buddy. You know, they'll, they'll say, Che Negro, you know, like, hi buddy. Uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't have the, imp the racial import that it does. Uh, let's say in the United States. And incidentally, this is one of the, my favorites, Che in, in uh, Argentine Spanish means high, and it's peculiar to, well, mostly to Buenos Aires. So when the man who is officially known as Ernesto uh, Guevara, um, oh, sorry, Guevara, uh, he was he was from Buenos Aires. He was a doctor, um, and he travelled a lot. When he travelled outside of Buenos Aires, um, into Cuba, uh, Bolivia, Venezuela, so forth, he would constantly greet people Che, and he became noted for that, and so he became called Che Guevara. Uh, che meaning the guy who's, who says Che. Uh, and I, I doubt that very many people outside of Argentina even know that, that it's not, a, it's not his official name. Uh, they also will say things like Che Boludo. Um, that's also very common. Boludo literally means small testicle. Well, well, it means something about your testicles. It can mean big, big balls or what have you. Um, but, but it's just uh, benign in, uh, in common parlance. Um, mostly I was called Gitano because I do a lot of traveling around the world. Um, so I was the gypsy. But I was also sometimes called Zorro, <laughs> which amused me greatly because, of course, there is the, you know, the uh, legendary um, Zorro with a mask and a, and a whip and so forth. Um, but f in my case, it just meant that I was lazy and, <laughs> and, and, and pretty much did what I want when I, when I want. And, uh, you know, so if I needed to eat, I would just cook even though it was you know, three in the afternoon or four in the morning and I would sleep at three in the afternoon or four in the morning you know just like a fox so so sorrow was was a nice one and that I don't remember any others uh, like sometimes they can be quite creative but it always struck me as being an important component of social interaction between uh, porteños, uh, pe people in Buenos Aires, that, that they, they had this formal vocabulary for, for talking about somebody and introducing them using their full name without diminutives. Um, and a, a great sensitivity about their 
diminutive and only allowing very, very few close intimates to use them. And then being completely casual and open about being called fatso <laughs> or chuffy, you know, it just, it's just a you know, kind of, you know, contradictory in a way that, that, that some things matter and some things don't. So it raises a, an anthropological question to me of why people take offense at certain things they are called and not others. And this is cultural. Uh, y you learn it from an early age, you know, like don't use a diminutive, use a nickname. And don't get offended by nicknames, but get offended by diminutives. It's the way the world works. So that's my informal thoughts for a Friday in Lent, well, in the um, carnival season leading up to Lent. So I hope you have a good weekend. I'll probably get back to cooking on Tuesday. Not sure yet. I've still, I've, I've mostly finished up the steak and kidney pudding, but I've still got a certain number of uh, things to finish up before I can go back into the freezer and, and start again. But I think by then, by, by Tuesday, I'll be, I'll be ready to do something. So have a jolly weekend.